Good day learners, this is Rani here and welcome to my virtual classroom. So for today's discussion, we will be discussing about illustrating the measures of position, particularly in the quartile, decile, and percentile. So before we proceed to our main discussion, let us have first answer this one of the questions from the comment section from the previous video lesson. So this is from Kyla Makalino. She is our new subscriber and the situation na binigay niya is If two cards are drawn in deck of cards, what is the probability of both queen or both red? So take note that if we are going to analyze the situation, this problem shows dependent events. Now in this kind of situation, there are three factors that we are going to consider. First is we need to find the probability that the two cards are both queen. Next is, we need to find the probability that the two cards are both red cards. And the last one is, we need to find the probability of cards which are red as well as queen. So let us have first the first factor which is the probability that the two cards are both queen. So we let this situation as an element of A. So we have the probability of A equal to the N of A over the N of S. Now take note that the problem is a dependent event. So in the first row in the deck of cards, there are 4 queens out of 52 cards. So therefore the probability in the first row is 4 over 52. So for the second row, there are only 3 over 51 since nakuha na natin yung first card natin from the first draw. So there are only 3 queens na lang yung natira out of 51 na lang din na mga cards. And what we're going to do is to multiply the result. So we have 4 times 3 which is equal to 12 and 52 times 51 is equal to 2,652. And we can reduce this one into lowest term by dividing both numerator and denominator by 12. So we have 1 over 221. So therefore, the probability that the two cards are both queen are or is 1 over 221. Now in the second factors, what if the probability of two cards are both red cards? So we let the situation as an element of B. So we have the probability of B equal to the n of b over the n of s. So how many red cards in a deck of cards? There are 13 diamonds and 13 hearts. So therefore, there are 26 red cards out of 52. So therefore, the probability in the first draw is 26 over 52. Now, in the second draw, we only have 25 over 51 since nakuha na natin yung isang card from the first draw. And then what we're going to do is to multiply the result. So we have 26 times 25 which is equal to 650 and 52 times 51 is 2,652. And then we can reduce this one into lowest term by dividing both numerator and denominator by 26. So 650 divided by 26 is 25. 2,652 divided by 26 is 102. So therefore, the probability that the two cards are both red cards are or is 25 over 102. Now in the third situation, we need to find the probability that the two cards which are red as well as queen. So red card na siya, tapos queen pag yun. So this situation implies the intersection from the first situation and the second situation. So this is the probability of A intersection B, which is equal to the N of A intersection B all over the N of S. So how many cards uh, so, so how many cards are red tapos queen pagyod? So there are only two cards which is the queen of hearts and the queen of diamond so we have the so therefore the probability that the card is 
a red as well as queen is 2 over 52. That is for the first draw. So for the second draw, there are only 1 over 51. So if we multiply the result, we have 2 over 2,652. And then we can reduce this one into lowest term, which is 1 over 1,326. Now, after finding the probability of the three situation, we can now use the formula for the union of two events. So, it is union from... So, our keyword here is the word OR. Diba? Both queen or both red. So, the keyword is the word OR. Since, if OR is used, then it means union. So, we will use the formula for the probability of A union B equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So for the probability of A, we have 1 over 221 plus the probability of B which is 200 plus the probability of B which is 25 over 102 minus the probability of A intersection B which is 1 over 1326. And to answer this one, we need to add and subtract these fractions. And this one is equal to 55 over 221. Or we can say 0 0.2488. Therefore, the probability that either both are red or both are queens is 0 0.2488. And that's it, Kyla. Thank you for giving the situation. So let us now move to our main discussion. Let us have first our learning objectives. After going through the lesson, you, the learner, are expected to demonstrate the knowledge of measures of position. Specifically, you will be able to illustrate quartiles, illustrate deciles, illustrates percentiles and identify a relationship between the measures of position. So let us have first our first key concept which is the quartiles. The quartiles are the three score points which divide a distribution into four equal parts. 25% of the distribution are below the first quartile 50% of the distribution are below the second quartile and 75% of the distribution are below the third quartile. So if we are going to illustrate quartiles, we have this one. So we have four blocks. These four blocks represents the whole parts which divides into four equal parts. And between the first and the second blocks, that is our first quartile which is the 25% of the distribution. Between the second and third blocks, that is our second quartile, which represents the 50% of the distribution. And between our third and fourth blocks, that is the third quartile, which represents the 75% of the distribution. Also, the first quartile is called the lower quartile, and the third quartile is called the upper quartile. The first quartile is less than the second quartile. The second quartile is less than the third quartile where the second quartile is what we call the median or we can say it is in the middle. For our key concept number two, we have the deciles. The deciles are the nine score points which divide a distribution into 10 equal parts. They are denoted as D sub 1, D sub 2, D sub 3, up to D sub 9, where 10% of the distributions are below the D sub 1, 20% of the distribution are below D sub 2, 30% of the distribution are below D sub 3, and so on. So if we illustrate this one, we have so we have 10 blocks which represents the whole parts and it divides into 10 equal parts. And between these 10 blocks, we have 
the nine score points, which are d sub one, d sub two, and so on up to d sub nine. And each point represents the ten percent of the distribution. So from d sub one, which is ten, d sub two becomes twenty, d sub three is thirty percent, and so on up to d sub nine, which is the ninety percent of the distribution. Our key concept number three is. The percentiles. The percentiles are the 99 score points which divide a distribution into 100 equal parts, so that each part represents the data set. It is used to characterize values according to the percentage below them. For example, the first percentile or the piece of one separates the lowest 1% from the other 99%. The second percentile or the P sub 2 separates the lowest 2% from the 99 from the other 98% and so on. So if we are going to compare this percentile from the previous quartiles and desire, we have this illustration. As you can observe from the quartile which the whole parts divide into four equal parts, Q sub 1 or the first quartile is the same as the 25th percentile since the first quartile is the 25% of the data. So therefore, the 25% of the data is the 25th percentile. Also, the Q sub 2 or the second quartile is the same as the 50th percentile, which is the median of the data. The Q sub 3 is the same as the 75th percentile. On the other hand, D cells divides the data into 10 equal parts, and D sub 1 is the same as P sub 10, which is the 10% of the data. D sub 2 is the same as P sub 20, which represents the 20% of the data and so on and so forth up to t sub 9 which is the same as the p sub 90 which represents the 90 percent of the data so what is the difference between quartile decile and percentile so from decile to quartile decile is more specific than quartile but in percentile Percentile is more specific than decile and quartile since it divides in the data by one. Let us have this activity, find your location. A group of students obtained the following scores in their statistics quiz. We have the scores which are 8, 2, 5, 4, 8, 5, 7, 1, 3, 6, and 9. So our first task is arrange the scores in ascending order. Next, from the arranged scores, 50% of the data is below of what number? What do you call this number? Third, from the arranged scores, 25% of the data is below of what number? What do you call this number? And the fourth task, from the arranged scores, 75% of the data is below of what number? And what do you call this number? So the first task is arrange the data in ascending order. Since it should be arranged in ascending order, so we have to write first the lowest number which is 1. Next is 2, then 3, 4, then 5, and then take note that there are 2 5. So you have to write another 5. And then 6, 7, 8, and again there is another 8, and then the last number is 9. So there are 11 numbers in total. So for number 2, from the arranged scores which I already included above, 50% of the data is below of what number? And what do you call this number? Take note that the 50% of the data is the median score. So what is the median score from 1 up to 9? Since there are 11 scores, 
Therefore, yung ika or the sixth score, yung ika na score is our median data or 50% of the data. So, if we are going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is this one, the second 5, this is our 50% of the data. So, therefore, that is 5. And what do you call this number? This is the second quartile or the median score. So, next is from the arranged scores, 25% of the data is below of what number? So, take note that yung ikalawang 5 is our 50% of the data. So, therefore, the 25% of the data is between 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what is that number? That number is 3. 3 is our 25% of the data or what we call the first quartile. For number 4, from the arranged scores, 75% of the data is below of what number? So again, yung ikalawang 5 is our 50% of the data. Therefore, the 75% of the data is between 6, 7, 8, 8, and 9. And what is that number? That number is the first 8. Yung unang 8 na number. That is the 75% of the data. And what do you call that number? That is the third quartile. Let us have another activity. This activity is, it's time to decide. For each of the given situation, answer or explain what is required. So let us have first, the first situation. Mrs. Labonete gave the test to her students in statistics. The students finished the test in 35 minutes. This time is the 2.5th decile of that allotted time. What does this mean? So if we are going to explain this one, let us have first this illustration. Take note that the 35 minutes is equal to the 2.5th decile and 2.5th decile is equal to the 25% of the time. So therefore, the students already finished the test with the 25% of the time. So how much time did Mrs. Labonete give to her student? So if we let x as the allotted time, then we have the x over the 35 minutes equal to 10 over 2.5. Uh, 10 represents the whole allotted time over the 2.5 this will represent the 35 minutes of the time. So if we cross multiply this one, we have x equal to 350 minutes over 2.5. And by dividing 350 divided by 2.5, we have x is equal to 140 minutes. And 140 minutes is equal to 2 hours and 20 minutes. Therefore, the allotted time for a statistics test is 2 hours and 20 minutes. So let us have this second situation. Anthony is a secretary in one big company in Metro Manila. His salary is in the third quartile. Should Anthony be glad about his salary or not? So if I am going to explain this situation, if Anthony's salary is in the third quartile, this means that 75% of the distribution or 75% of the company's employees are below his salary. Therefore, Anthony should be glad about it. So imagine if there are 100 employees in the company, 75 of the employees are below of the Anthony's salary. So therefore, mas malaki yung salary ni Anthony kaysa 75% of the company's employees. And that's it for this video lesson. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you have any math lesson that you would like me to answer to make a video, then just comment down below. Also, do not forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. See ya in the next video lesson. Bye!